Chapter Five of A Distinguished Provincial at Paris by Honoré de Balzac, translated by Ellen Marriage. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bruce Peary. Chapter Five. The name of Flicoteau is engraved on many memories. Few indeed were the students who lived in the Latin Quarter during the last twelve years of the Restoration and did not frequent that temple sacred to hunger and impecuniosity there a dinner of three courses with a quarter bottle of wine or a bottle of beer could be had for eighteen sous or for twenty-two sous the quarter bottle becomes a bottle flicoteau that friend of youth would beyond a doubt have amassed a colossal fortune but for a line on his bill of fare a line which rival establishments are wont to print in capital letters thus bread at discretion which being interpreted should read indiscretion Flicoteau has been nursing father to many an illustrious name. Verily, the heart of more than one great man ought to wax warm with innumerable recollections of inexpressible enjoyment at the sight of the small square window panes that look upon the Place de la Sorbonne and the Rue Neuve de Richelieu. Flicoteau the second and Flicoteau the third respected the old exterior, maintaining the dingy hue and general air of a respectable old established house showing thereby the depth of their contempt for the charlatanism of the shop front the kind of advertisement which feasts the eyes at the expense of the stomach to which your modern restaurant almost always has recourse here you beheld no piles of straw stuffed game never destined to make the acquaintance of the spit no fantastical fish to justify the montebank's remark i saw a fine carp to-day i expect to buy it this day week instead of the prime vegetables more fittingly described by the word primeval artfully displayed in the window for the delectation of the military man and his fellow countrywoman the nursemaid honest flicoteau exhibited full salad bowls adorned with many a rivet or pyramids of stewed prunes to rejoice the sight of the customer and assure him that the word dessert with which other handbills made too free was in this case no charter to hoodwink the public loaves of six pounds weight cut in four quarters made good the promise of bread at discretion such was the plenty of the establishment that moliere would have celebrated it if it had been in existence in his day so comically appropriate is the name flicoteau still subsists so long as students are minded to live flicoteau will make a living you feed there neither more nor less and you feed as you work with morose or cheerful industry according to the circumstances and the temperament at that time his well-known establishment consisted of two dining halls at right angles to each other long narrow low-ceilinged rooms looking respectively on the rue neuve de richelieu and the place de la sorbonne the furniture must have come originally from the refectory of some abbey for there was a monastic look about the lengthy tables where the serviettes of regular customers each thrust through a numbered ring of crystallized tin plate were laid by their places flicoteau the first only changed the serviettes of a sunday but flicoteau the second changed them twice a week it is said under pressure of competition which threatened his dynasty flicoteau's restaurant is no banqueting hall with its refinements and luxuries it is a workshop where suitable tools are provided and everybody gets up and goes as soon as he has finished the coming and going within are swift there is no dawdling among the waiters they are all busy every one of them is wanted the fare is not very varied the potato is a permanent institution there might not be a single tuber left in ireland and prevailing dearth elsewhere but you would still find potatoes at flicoteau's not once in thirty years shall you miss its pale gold the colour beloved of titian sprinkled with chopped verdure the potato enjoys a privilege that women might envy such as you see it in eighteen fourteen so shall you find it in eighteen forty mutton cutlets and fillet of beef at flicoteau's represent black game and fillet of sturgeon at verrie's they are not on the regular bill of fare that is and must be ordered beforehand 
beef of the feminine gender there prevails the young of the bovine species appears in all kinds of ingenious disguises when the whiting and mackerel abound on our shores they are likewise seen in large numbers at flicoteaux's his whole establishment indeed is directly affected by the caprices of the season and the vicissitudes of french agriculture by eating your dinners at flicoteaux's you learn a host of things of which the wealthy the idle and folk indifferent to the phases of nature have no suspicion and the student penned up in the latin quarter is kept accurately informed of the state of the weather and good or bad seasons he knows when it is a good year for peas or french beans and the kind of salad stuff that is plentiful when the great market is glutted with cabbages he is at once aware of the fact and the failure of the beetroot crop is brought home to his mind a slander old in circulation in lucien's time connected the appearance of beefsteaks with a mortality among horseflesh few parisian restaurants are so well worth seeing every one at flicoteaux's is young you see nothing but youth and although earnest faces and grave gloomy anxious faces are not lacking you see hope and confidence and poverty gaily endured dress as a rule is careless and regular comers in decent clothes are marked exceptions everybody knows at once that something extraordinary is afoot a mistress to visit a theatre party or some excursion into higher spheres here it is said friendships have been made among students who became famous men in after days as will be seen in the course of this narrative but with the exception of a few knots of young fellows from the same part of france who make a group about the end of a table the gravity of the diners is hardly relaxed perhaps this gravity is due to the catholicity of the wine which checks good fellowship of any kind flicoteaux's frequenters may recollect certain sombre and mysterious figures enveloped in the gloom of the chilliest penury these beings would dine there daily for a couple of years and then vanish and the most inquisitive regular comer could throw no light on the disappearance of such goblins of paris friendships struck up over flicoteaux's dinners were sealed in neighboring cafes in the flames of heady punch or by the generous warmth of a small cup of black coffee glorified by a dash of something hotter and stronger lucien like all neophytes was modest and regular in his habits in those early days at the hotel de cluny after the first unlucky venture in fashionable life which absorbed his capital he threw himself into his work with the first earnest enthusiasm which is frittered away so soon over the difficulties or in the by-paths of every life in paris the most luxurious and the very poorest lives are equally beset with temptations which nothing but the fierce energy of genius or the morose persistence of ambition can overcome lucien used to drop in at flicoteaux's about half-past four having remarked the advantages of an early arrival the bill of fare was more varied and there was still some chance of obtaining the dish of your choice like all imaginative persons he had taken a fancy to a particular seat and showed discrimination in his selection on the very first day he had noticed a table near the counter and from the faces of those who sat about it and chance snatches of their talk he recognized brothers of the craft a sort of instinct moreover pointed out the table near the counter as a spot whence he could parley with the owners of the restaurant in time an acquaintance would grow up he thought and then in the day of distress he could no doubt obtain the necessary credit so he took his place at a small square table close to the desk intended probably for casual comers for the two clean serviettes were unadorned with rings lucien's opposite neighbor was a thin pallid youth to all appearance as poor as himself his handsome face was somewhat worn already it told of hopes that had vanished leaving lines upon his forehead and barren furrows in his soul where seeds had been sown that had come to nothing 
lucien felt drawn to the stranger by these tokens his sympathies went out to him with irresistible fervor after a week's exchange of small courtesies and remarks the poet from angouleme found the first person with whom he could chat the stranger's name was etienne lousteau two years ago he had left his native place a town in berry just as lucien had come from angouleme his lively gestures bright eyes and occasionally curt speech revealed a bitter apprenticeship to literature etienne had come from sancerre with his tragedy in his pocket drawn to paris by the same motives that impelled lucien hope of fame and power and money sometimes etienne lousteau came for several days together but in a little while his visits became few and far between and he would stay away for five or six days in succession then he would come back and lucien would hope to see his poet next day only to find a stranger in his place when two young men meet daily their talk harks back to their last conversation but these continual interruptions obliged lucien to break the ice afresh each time and further checked an intimacy which made little progress during the first few weeks on inquiry of the damsel at the counter lucien was told that his future friend was on the staff of a small newspaper and wrote reviews of books and dramatic criticism of pieces played at the ambigu comique the gaieté and the panorama dramatique the young man became a personage all at once in lucien's eyes now he thought he would lead the conversation on rather more personal topics and make some effort to gain a friend so likely to be useful to a beginner the journalist stayed away for a fortnight lucien did not know that etienne only dined at flicoteaux's when he was hard up and hence his gloomy air of disenchantment and the chilly manner which lucien met with gracious smiles and amiable remarks but after all the project of a friendship called for mature deliberation this obscure journalist appeared to lead an expensive life in which petit verre cups of coffee punch bowls sightseeing and suppers played a part in the early days of lucien's life in the latin quarter he behaved like a poor child bewildered by his first experience of paris life so that when he had made a study of prices and weighed his purse he lacked courage to make advances to etienne he was afraid of beginning a fresh series of blunders of which he was still repenting and he was still under the yoke of provincial creeds his two guardian angels eve and david rose up before him at the least approach of an evil thought putting him in mind of all the hopes that were centred on him of the happiness that he owed to the old mother of all the promises of his genius he spent his mornings in studying history at the bibliothèque sainte genevieve his very first researches made him aware of frightful errors in the memoirs of the archer of charles the ninth when the library closed he went back to his damp chilly room to correct his work cutting out whole chapters and piecing it together anew and after dining at flicoteaux's he went down to the passage du commerce to see the newspapers at Bloss's reading-room as well as new books and magazines and poetry so as to keep himself informed of the movements of the day and when towards midnight he returned to his wretched lodgings he had used neither fuel nor candlelight his reading in those days made such an enormous change in his ideas that he revised the volume of flower sonnets his beloved marguerite working them over to such purpose that scarce a hundred lines of the original verses were allowed to stand so in the beginning lucien led the honest innocent life of the country lad who never leaves the latin quarter devoting himself wholly to his work with thoughts of the future always before him who finds flicoteaux's ordinary luxurious after the simple home fare and strolls for recreation along the alleys of the luxembourg the blood surging back to his heart as he gives timid side glances to the pretty women but this could not last lucien with his poetic temperament and boundless longings 
could not withstand the temptations held out by the playbills the theatre francais the vaudeville the varieté the opéra comique relieved him of some sixty francs although he always went to the pit what student could deny himself the pleasure of seeing talma in one of his famous roles lucien was fascinated by the theatre that first love of all poetic temperaments the actors and actresses were awe-inspiring creatures he did not so much as dream of the possibility of crossing the footlights and meeting them on familiar terms the men and women who gave him so much pleasure were surely marvellous beings whom the newspapers treated with as much gravity as matters of national interest to be a dramatic author to have a play produced on the stage what a dream was this to cherish a dream which a few bold spirits like casimir de la vigne had actually realized thick swarming thoughts like these and moments of belief in himself followed by despair gave lucien no rest and kept him in the narrow way of toil and frugality in spite of the smothered grumblings of more than one frenzied desire carrying prudence to an extreme he made it a rule never to enter the precincts of the palais royal that place of perdition where he had spent fifty francs at verrie's in a single day and nearly five hundred francs on his clothes and when he yielded to temptation and saw fleury talma the two baptistes or michaud he went no further than the murky passage where theatre-goers used to stand in a string from half-past five in the afternoon till the hour when the doors opened and belated comers were compelled to pay ten sous for a place near the ticket office and after waiting for two hours the cry of all tickets are sold rang not unfrequently in the ears of disappointed students when the play was over lucien went home with downcast eyes through streets lined with living attractions and perhaps fell in with one of those commonplace adventures which loom so large in a young and timorous imagination one day lucien counted over his remaining stock of money and took alarm at the melting of his funds a cold perspiration broke out upon him when he thought that the time had come when he must find a publisher and try also to find work for which a publisher would pay him the young journalist with whom he had made a one-sided friendship never came now to flicoteaux's lucien was waiting for a chance which failed to present itself in paris there are no chances except for men with a very wide circle of acquaintance chances of success of every kind increase with the number of your connections and therefore in this sense also the chances are in favor of the big battalions lucien had sufficient provincial foresight still left and had no mind to wait until only a last few coins remained to him he resolved to face the publishers so one tolerably chilly september morning lucien went down the rue de la harpe with his two manuscripts under his arm as he made his way to the quai des augustins and went along looking into the bookseller's windows on one side and into the seine on the other his good genius might have counselled him to pitch himself into the water sooner than plunge into literature after heart-searching hesitations after a profound scrutiny of the various countenances more or less encouraging soft-hearted churlish cheerful or melancholy to be seen through the window-panes or in the doorways of the booksellers establishments he espied a house where the shopmen were busy packing books at a great rate goods were being dispatched the walls were plastered with bills just out le solitaire by m le vicomte d'arlincourt third edition leonide by victor ducange five volumes duodecimo printed on fine paper twelve francs induction morale by Keratri. they are lucky that they are exclaimed lucien the placard a new and original idea of the celebrated l'advocat was just beginning to blossom out upon the walls 
in no long space paris was to wear motley thanks to the exertions of his imitators and the treasury was to discover a new source of revenue anxiety sent the blood surging to lucien's heart as he who had been so great at angouleme so insignificant of late in paris slipped past the other houses summoned up all his courage and at last entered the shop thronged with assistants customers and booksellers and authors too perhaps thought lucien i want to speak with m vidal or m porchon he said addressing a shopman he had read the names on the signboard vidal and porchon it ran french and foreign booksellers agents both gentlemen are engaged said the man i will wait left to himself the poet scrutinized the packages and amused himself for a couple of hours by scanning the titles of books looking into them and reading a page or two here and there at last as he stood leaning against a window he heard voices and suspecting that the green curtains hid either vidal or porchon he listened to the conversation will you take five hundred copies of me if you will i will let you have them at five francs and give fourteen to the dozen what does that bring them in at sixteen sous less four francs four sous said vidal or porchon whichever it was yes said the vendor credit your account inquired the purchaser old humbug you would settle with me in eighteen months time with bills at a twelve month no settled at once returned vidal or porchon bills at nine months asked the publisher or author who evidently was selling his book no my dear fellow twelve months returned one of the firm of booksellers agents there was a pause you are simply cutting my throat said the visitor but in a year's time shall we have placed a hundred copies of leonide said the other voice if books went off as fast as the publishers would like we should be millionaires my good sir but they don't they go as the public pleases there is some one now bringing out an edition of scott's novels at eighteen sous per volume three livres twelve sous per copy and you want me to give you more for your stale remainders no if you mean me to push this novel of yours you must make it worth my while Fidel a stout man with a pen behind his ear came down from his desk how many copies of ducange did you place last journey asked porchon of his partner two hundred of le petit vieillard de calais but to sell them i was obliged to cry down two books which pay in less commission and uncommonly fine nightingales they are now a nightingale as lucien afterwards learned is a bookseller's name for books that linger on hand perched out of sight in the loneliest nooks in the shop and besides added vidal picard is bringing out some novels as you know we have been promised twenty per cent on the published price to make the thing a success very well at twelve months the publisher answered in a piteous voice thunderstruck by vidal's confidential remark is it an offer porchon inquired curtly yes the stranger went out after he had gone lucien heard porchon say to vidal we have three hundred copies on order now we will keep him waiting for his settlement sell the leonide for five francs net settlement in six months and and that will be fifteen hundred francs into our pockets said vidal oh i saw quite well that he was in a fix he is giving ducange four thousand francs for two thousand copies lucien cut vidal short by appearing in the entrance of the den i have the honor of wishing you a good day gentlemen he said addressing both partners the booksellers nodded slightly i have a french historical romance after the style of scott it is called the archer of charles the ninth i propose to offer it to you porchon glanced at lucien with lustreless eyes and laid his pen down on the desk vidal stared rudely at the author we are not publishing booksellers sir we are booksellers agents he said when we bring out a book ourselves we only deal in well-known names and we only take serious literature besides history and epitomes 
but my book is very serious it is an attempt to set the struggle between catholics and calvinists in its true light the catholics were supporters of absolute monarchy and the protestants for a republic monsieur vidal shouted an assistant vidal fled i don't say sir that your book is not a masterpiece replied porchon with scanty civility but we only deal in books that are ready printed go and see somebody that buys manuscripts there is old Dogoreau in the rue du coq near the louvre he is in the romance line if you had only spoken sooner you might have seen paulet a competitor of Dogoreau and of the publisher in the wooden galleries i have a volume of poetry monsieur porchon somebody shouted poetry porchon exclaimed angrily for what do you take me he added laughing in lucien's face and he dived into the regions of the back shop End of chapter five